genetics, and sexual differentiation. It's a lot of hard biological work to create life. A whole lot had to happen in just a very specific way in order for you to be here today. The trillions of cells that currently make up the marvelous you began here at fertilization. You inherited 23 chromosomes from your mom in the egg that made you. For your sex chromosome, the egg always carries an X, so you always inherit an X chromosome from your mother, whether you're male or female. You inherited another 23 chromosomes from your dad through the sperm that made you. This poor little sperm had to conquer tremendous obstacles and competition in order to reach the egg. For your sex chromosome, the sperm can carry either an X or a Y chromosome. If you are a male, you inherited a Y chromosome, and if you are female, you inherited an X chromosome from the sperm that came from your father. At week 8, the external genitalia begin to form. This process is known as sexual differentiation. Sexual differentiation refers to the development of the anatomical features of the reproductive tract. At the 8 and 9 week stage of development, the primitive reproductive tracts are in the form of a pair of ducts called the Mullerian duct and the Wolfian duct. As development proceeds, one of the pairs of ducts develops while the other regresses. It is the presence or absence of the sex-determining region of the Y chromosome that dictates which ducts develop. Male fetuses have inherited a Y chromosome from the sperm. The sex-determining region of the Y chromosome is also known as the SRY gene. Recall that males are XY and females are XX. The SRY gene is only found on the sex-determining region of the Y chromosome. First, the SRY gene gets transcribed and translated to make testes determining factor, or TDF. TDF travels to the DNA and binds to it. When TDF binds, it allows for the transcription and translation of genes that create transcription factors such as SOX9. SOX9 will then go and bind to different portions of the DNA, allowing for other genes to be expressed. The SOX9 acts to develop the primitive testes. The testes then begin to mature and create different cell types that will play a key role in sexual differentiation. The developing testes contain two types of cells, the Leydig cells and Sertoli cells. Leydig cells release testosterone, and Sertoli cells release anti-Mullerian hormone, or AMH. Testosterone triggers the development of the Wolfian duct into the male reproductive organs, including the epididymis, the vas deferens, and the seminal vesicles. While testosterone secreted from the testes acts to stimulate the growth and development of reproductive organs, the anti-Mullerian hormones, or AMH, acts to inhibit the formation of the Mullerian ducts, which would mature into fallopian tubes, the uterus, and the upper regions of the vagina. By week 16, the external genitalia are fully formed. The formation of the sex organs in the womb are dependent on a multitude of variable factors, including the presence or absence of several transcription factors and hormones. The concentrations of different hormones varies greatly and gives different outcomes. In addition, the body must be able to recognize the presence of these hormones. Because there are so many stages of sexual development in human life, there are a lot of opportunities for a person to develop along a path that is not the average one for a boy or girl. When a less common path of sexual development is taken, a condition is often called a disorder of sexual development. Such disorders result in different variations of sex development. There's a condition called 5-alpha reductase deficiency or 5-ARD. 5-ARD is an autosomal recessive intersex condition caused by a mutation of the 5-alpha reductase type 2 gene. In a huge complex cascade of events leading to sexual development in the womb, small alterations can have a big impact. 
In 5ARD, there is a genetic mutation that causes the enzyme 5 alpha reductase to lack the ability to convert testosterone into dihydrotestosterone or DHT. A term for this condition is guevadosis, which literally translates as penis at 12. Other names for this condition have been machehembris, which means first a woman, then a man, and ternums, which means expected to become men. As you may have guessed from these names, individuals having this order are born looking physically female. They are born with all of the female secondary sexual characteristics, including female external genitalia. They are born without any male characteristics or any visible physical indication that they are genetically male. Imagine being born as a 5ARD child. You're dressed up in dresses and bows. You're encouraged to play with dolls. You might be discouraged from roughhousing with friends or playing sports. You would be expected to prefer playing house to outdoor sports. Individuals with 5ARD are usually raised as though they were female, but they usually have a male gender identity. This means they usually feel more comfortable playing male roles and participating in stereotypical male behaviors. At the onset of puberty, males with 5ARD that are raised as female may be waiting for their first menstruation that never comes. In 5ARD, the body responds to the onset of puberty in an astonishing way. The testes will descend from the internal pubic region and exit the body. The clitoris will enlarge to form the head of the penis. The scrotum begins to form, the voice begins to deepen, and body and facial hair becomes evident. 5ARD is a rare autosomal recessive genetic disorder in the general population. However, it is actually very prevalent in an isolated village in the southwestern region of the Dominican Republic and in the eastern highlands of Papua New Guinea. The phenomenon of 5ARD in these populations have changed the perception of gender. Genetically, 5ARD males are XY, their Y chromosome has a functional intact SRY gene, and the hormonal cascade triggered by the expression of the SRY gene are all normal and functional. In 5ARD males, the Mullerian ducts are successfully inhibited from developing the internal female reproductive structures. The Wolfian duct is successfully activated to develop into the internal male reproductive structures. The difference is that 5ARD males cannot make dihydroxytestosterone or DHT. DHT is important for the development of the external male genitalia. In 5ARD, the body is unable to convert testosterone to DHT. The consequence of not being able to produce DHT is that these people are born with internal male sex organs, including testicles and Wolfian structures. The testes, however, lie inside of the body instead of being distended as seen in non-5ARD males. Occasionally, the genitalia may be ambiguous and may result in conditions such as macroclitoris or micropenis. Due to the prevalence of these types of births, both cultures believe in three sexual categories, males, females, and pseudohermaphrodites. The Zambians of Papua New Guinea view these children as flawed males. The children are rejected and humiliated by their families and society. On the other hand, in the Dominican Republic, the birth of a so-called pseudo-hermaphrodite is fully accepted, and during puberty, the child's physical transformation into a male is marked by a joyous celebration. There's also a condition called congenital adrenal hyperplasia, or CAH. CAH is a term for several genetic conditions that alter the production of mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids, or sex steroids. Most of these conditions involve excess or deficient production of sex steroids and can alter the development of primary or secondary sexual characteristics. These can happen in infants, children, and adults. Symptoms due to inadequate mineralocorticoids can include vomiting due to salt wasting leading to hydration and death. Symptoms due to excess androgens can include a functional penis of average size without sperm production. 
ambiguous genitalia, early onset pubic hair, early onset puberty, or failure of puberty to occur altogether, excessive facial hair, the absence of menstruation, infertility, having an enlarged clitoris, and a shallow vagina. Heterosexual precocious puberty occurs when the child of a certain sex develops sexual organs and secondary sexual characteristics of the opposite sex. For example, a male will develop breasts and other female characteristics. A female will develop body hair and facial hair and experience a deepened voice. Androgen insensitivity syndrome, or AIS, is a condition that results in the partial or complete inability of the cells to respond to androgens. The unresponsiveness of the cells to the presence of androgenic hormones can impair or prevent the masculinization of male genitalia in the developing fetus, as well as the development of male secondary sexual characteristics but does not significantly impair female genitalia or sexual development. Men with AIS are genetically male but appear outwardly female. These cases usually only become evident at the onset of puberty when menstruation fails to begin. Kleinfelter syndrome is a set of symptoms that results from a male having two or more X chromosomes in addition to their Y chromosome. The primary features of Kleinfelter syndrome are sterility, weaker muscles, poor coordination, decreased body hair, breast growth, and smaller genitals. The underlying mechanism involves that there's at least an extra X chromosome in addition to the Y chromosome, such as XXY or even XXXY. Astonishingly, Kleinfelder syndrome is one of the most common chromosomal disorders, occurring in up to 1 in 500 live male births. Turner syndrome is a condition in which a female is missing an X chromosome. Instead of being XX, they're X0. Signs and symptoms vary, but common traits include a webbed neck, low-set ears, a low hairline, short stature, an absence of menstruation, underdeveloped breasts, and infertility. Turner syndrome occurs in between 1 in 2,000 and 1 in 5,000 females at birth. Generally, people with Turner syndrome have a shorter life expectancy and are more likely to develop heart problems and diabetes. Fragile X syndrome is a genetic mutation on the X chromosome in males. Symptoms include an elongated face, large or protruding ears, flat feet, larger than average testes, and low muscle tone, and low muscle tone. Fragile X syndrome affects the sexes differently. Females have two X chromosomes, so the effects of the mutated X chromosome is masked partially by the presence of the unaffected X chromosome, making symptoms less severe. Since males only have one X chromosome, the symptoms of Fragile X syndrome are much more severe. Thank you for watching.